I'm outside doing my daily wood walk looking for more mushrooms. And uh, as soon as I walked out on my front porch, I was like, oh, I hear a swarm somewhere. Now, I've already done splits on my hives fairly recently. And the chance of my hives swarming right after you do splits, pretty slim or not at all. Not saying that it's impossible because everything's possible in the bee world. But anyways, so I start looking for where this swarm is at. And I start walking toward the back where I've got a bunch of beehives. And I had two other hives set up for when these swarms built out in the nukes. I was going to transfer the swarms from the nuke into these hives. And then I happen to look down as I'm getting closer to this back bee area. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like that, like I could hear it as I'm approaching. If you've ever heard a swarm, you know what I'm talking about. Like you can hear them from a distance. I mean, I originally when I walked out on my porch, I was 40 feet away from it. And I could hear it. I just couldn't see it. So I get back to where these hives are at. And I'm like, is this swarm over here by my hives? And I happen to look over and the swarm is actually in. In, like literally in one of those blank hives I had set up to move my nukes into in a week or two. So thanks for the extra work, Swarm. I have no idea whose Swarm you are. We will know whether or not you're mine or not because I mark all my queens. My queens are always marked. <laughs> I just thought it was crazy that, um, you know, you hear of people that have like an empty hive and a Swarm just moves into it, but I've never... All my years of beekeeping, I've never had that happen. I'll uh, I'll go over here and show you what this is looks like. I'm not that far from it. You might be able to, you might be able to actually hear it from here. I'll just keep you entertained while we walk over there, because I'm probably only about 60 or 80 feet away from it. As the flow, as the crow flies, 60 or 80 feet. Of course, that's requiring me to take the path through the woods. Maybe they moved out already. I figured I'd be able to hear them by now. That almost seems like the craziest thing ever, though. If a swarm moved into my hive that I had prepared to put a nuke in, <laughs> that's just crazy. Oh, I'm up here by the uh, honey locust, and I got tennis shoes on. Well, this is going to be interesting. If you hear me scream like a... I'm getting closer, I swear. Are they still over there? Oh, yep. I think I hear them. I think they're still there. That is the craziest thing ever. <laughs> I can see them now. You get over here, you'll see, like... Looks like they're all in the hive now. When I first come out here, they were still bearded on the front of it. Look at this. So it looks like they're doing some, uh, I see some flying in circles, so they're doing orientation flights. They just like claim that hive as their own. Let's see if I can move in a little bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> beekeeping is so strange you just never know what's going to happen from day to day but my queens are marked so once these bees settle down I'll uh, take a look at them and see
I'll take a look at them and see uh, the queen. Now, all of my queens don't have the same marks, so if I inspect that hive after it calms down here in a couple hours, and I can find the queen and she's marked, then I might be able to tell which one of my hives she come out of, and I could at least narrow it down, and then I can inspect all the hives that have that color of queen in them to make sure it wasn't mine that swarmed. If she's unmarked, then I know it's not my queen and it come from somewhere else, which isn't uncommon. It's usually about this time of year, about mid-April to mid-May, I start getting like a whole bunch of swarms that show up here. And uh, it's, it's not unusual. I think I got three last year. Only, only one of those survived. Um, they come in... A lot of the swarms that I get here or I find on my property aren't my bees. They always come in with unmarked queens. None of my hive, all my hives have marked queens. So, but what happens is they come in, they usually have like high mite loads and just they're a mess. And it's where other beekeepers just don't take care of their bees. And they just let them swarm like, ah, save the bees. We'll just stick these boxes out here and let them live and do whatever they want. Well, they're going to swarm sometimes three times a year or more. And then they end up at my place and I got to deal with the <laughs> unmaintained bees. I don't know who, like, I mean, I, there's all kinds of people around here that raise bees now because... I'm back over here again looking at this hive. I just cannot believe a swarm moved into my hive. Do I have another empty Langstroth that's already ready to go? I'm, I know I do, but I just got to go drag another hive out now and figure out where I'm going to put it. Oh, the fun of beekeeping. Anyways, I just thought I would show that to you. That was just the most craziest thing ever. I wish I could have recorded it like when I first come out here. When they were swarmed up on the, or when they were bearded up on the front of the hive. And I was like, where'd that swarm come from? If you listen, like, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can still hear them. And I'm 20 feet away now. They're not as loud as they was when they were bearded up. Like when, like when they were first, like I, they must have just got on there as I walked outside because, like I said, they were built, bearded up. And normally a swarm, when they're bearded up, they're quiet. They're just checking out everything, though. That is, I swear, that is just so crazy. <laughs> the fun of beekeeping though you just never know they are definitely though doing circular flights right above that hive they are still going in and out of the entrance I don't know like when they were bearded up it, was, it wasn't like a huge swarm but it was probably 2 or 3 pounds um, there's actually some fighting going on on the side of the hive. But that hive was empty. There shouldn't be like any defense of anything around the hive. Like it was clear empty. It didn't, it had, it had five frames in it <laughs> and a, uh, in a deep box with another deep box on top set up as a feeder. Because you can actually see I've got the I've got the top cover between the two boxes. Because I got it set up to be as a you know as a build up hive when I put that nuke in there in a couple weeks. Ha <laughs> oh, craziness. I always tell people, like I say this all the time, beekeeping is the most enjoyable, frustrating thing I do on the homestead. It is so fast paced, like you literally come, 
Well, this year is February, but generally come March, you better jump out of bed with your tennis shoes already on running. I hate, I hate that it's that way, but that's kind of the way it is. You don't get to stop running until about October or November. I mean, it does kind of slow down, though, quite a bit after, like, you pull the honey supers. Usually, end of June, first part of July, it slows down. But, like, March, April, May, June, and July, man, always something new every day. Anyways, I know this is a long video. I didn't mean to drag this out for 11 minutes, but uh, hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.